hear me now, can't you? All right. But, but anyway, that, that is going to be a thrilling, isn't it? Uh, I, don't, I don't have a word to describe what it's going to be like. But uh, I know it's real. I, can, I feel his spirit. I've never seen him face to face, but the Bible tells us we will someday. And we're going we're gonna to live and dwell uh, in, in his glory. And we're going to have a glorified body like him. My goodness, I, I'm really I'm looking forward to that. Tell you what, we're getting, close, we're getting closer to home uh, every day. I hope everybody's had a wonderful Lord's Day. And uh, let's do remember all of our announcements. Uh, remember this coming Wednesday night, we're, uh, we're in chapter 4 of 1 Peter. We will be starting verse number 12. We try to take all that down to the end of that chapter. And let's remember, we're having a family night, fun night. This is this coming uh, Saturday at 5.30. Five, five, five o'clock. Okay, I had it 30 minutes later. So, right. Everybody's invited. Yep. There you go. Hey, ma'am. Yeah, we miss the fellowship that we we have on, on a regular basis, trying to get get some things back, and we started our Sunday school back, and so uh, we're going to have. Oh, do remember this coming Wednesday, Sister Michelle is going to be teaching a children's class. So you bring your kids, a grandkid, a niece, nephew. Uh, she's going to have a class uh, for the kids this coming Wednesday, and that service starts at. 6 30 and then uh let's just plan on coming okay we'll love to see you that saturday so that's five o'clock instead of 5 30 and so come they're asking bring a dessert or, or a, a soda and bring yourself and your family all right we'll have a wonderful time okay uh i guess that's all the announcements uh did anybody have a prayer request is before we go to the lord in prayer Any spoken request? Yes. All right, let's remember these. Any others? Oh, my. All right, let's pray for Sister Lena. Yes. All right, let's remember the Andes family. I didn't mention this morning, or I know I've mentioned it, a service or two, but let's pray for Brother Kevin Lewis. Lift him up uh, to the Lord. And uh, Brother Kevin's had to step down because of his health from his church at Unicoi. And we'll be letting you know more about that. We love Brother Kevin. We've known him for years. Uh, he served here uh, as youth minister and as our associate pastor. Just a good man of God and Sister Buffy. We love them. And uh, he's, uh, he's had to step down because of his health. So uh, we're going we're to help him here at the church. So uh, we appreciate him so very much. He's helped he and Sister uh, Buffy, all right? And I'll let you know more about that. I'm hoping several of our churches are going to help him in our Appalachian. So if you want anything to go to him or to help him, we'll, we'll make sure that, that he gets that. Uh, so uh, I know they'll, they'll need some help, all right? So do, and do remember, do remember Brother Kevin in your prayers. He needs a touch from the Lord. Amen. The Lord can do it. Uh, yes, Sister Kathy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, bless him. Amen. I like what you shared with us this morning. 52 years ago, you went out on your first date on Valentine's Day. I thought that was sweet. Amen. Brother Francis. Yeah.
Oh no. Not good. And what's the name of this country? Asia, okay. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? Let's do pray for our country too, amen. 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 Any others? Oh boy. Oh my. Oh. Yes. Amen. Remember Jeff. Any others? Brother Johnny. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know about all Burleson's wonderful people. Known them for years. Yes, just remember uh, Terry, lift him up to the Lord and his and has another brother. Yeah. Mm. As long as we live in this old world, there's going to be sickness hitting there and death. But thank God I'm going to a city where it's not wanted. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. What if he came right now? Wouldn't it be great? Amen. Glory to God. I'm getting excited. The king's coming, amen. Woo, hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a lot of unrest in this world and a lot of uncertainties. I'm going to tell you something. One thing is certain. Death's coming to every one of us. And we're going to face it unless the rapture takes place. And that, my understanding of the Bible prophecy, there isn't any other sign has to be fulfilled for Jesus to come and get his bride, amen. That, that's my understanding of it. So we just need to be watching and looking and uh, be, be ready because he could come at any time. Amen. He could come for us individually or come for his church. So we want, we want, to, be, we want to be ready. Amen. Yes, yes. Pray for all of our members that would love to come. And uh, I was encouraged this morning, let me say, uh, we had s several back with us, and uh, that, that was a blessing to me. We've, uh, we want to get as many back as we can, amen, because we, we miss you uh, when, when you're not here. So if you're watching this service tonight, we want you to know we love you, and we're hoping and praying that real soon you'll get to come back and be with us, all right? Isn't it? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Appreciate Brother Jason. Amen. Jason, I was thinking, I remember when you was a boy, that's how old I am. <laughs> and now your boys are, gro are grown. I'm telling you what. I remember when Ian was born. Amen. Yep. God is good. All the time. All the time. The Praise the Lord. Everybody can and will. Let's have an altar prayer tonight. Everybody, let's gather around the altar and let's pray. Amen. Let's go seek our Father. Let's come to the throne of grace and mercy. Amen. Yes, and I didn't mention Brother Tom Turner. Anybody else? Sister Dot. Rick Barry, yes, let's remember Brother Rick. I talked to Brother Rick a few days ago. Uh, he's, uh, he's still recovering, so I, they're wanting to get back real soon. So do, do remember uh, uh, him in your prayers, the Sister Diane. Did I do unspoken request? I don't know if I did or not. How about the unspoken request? The uplifted hand. Brother Francis, would you lead us to the Lord in prayer, brothers? We all pray together.
it back so y'all don't see me. Y'all pray I'm going to try to sing one song. I've been working so much. I got two pianos in my house and I haven't touched a one of them and I can't tell you how long. So uh, <clears throat> I said that's pretty bad when you have two pianos and you don't even play. <laughs> so uh, but I just run across this one a minute ago and uh, uh, it's just so true. It's just an old song and Everybody knows it, and I'm glad that uh, even through all this pandemic, uh, the only thing that's kept me going is knowing that I have a friend in Jesus and that he's taken care of me, and, you know, I've not went hungry yet, and uh, he's blessed me with the roof over my head, and, uh, you know, sometimes all the material things uh, cloud our view, and uh, we don't... Uh, realize what our needs are, but uh, sometimes we think we need things we don't need, but uh, I'm glad that the Lord is my friend, and uh, I just look to him for all things, so y'all just listen to the words of this old song, and sing it if you want to sing it. Our 
sorrow's cheer. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy? want us to hold anything back from him you have a care you have a problem you have sin something bothering you give it all to him I'm convinced that the longer I am in this Christian life and I live for the Lord there are a lot of things we bring on ourselves that we could just leave it in the hands of our Lord and hey he can, he can do better with it. He knows what to do when, when we don't know what to do. And he can do it when we can't. Now, if there's something he expects us and calls us to do, he'll give, he'll give us the power to do it, won't he, and, and the ability. Uh, I love that old song. Thank you so much, Brother Jason. Turn with me to Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Uh, Psalm 49. I'm going to uh, preach tonight on you can't take it with you. Amen. They can't, we can't. And I'm going to, I'm going to start reading uh, verse number 14. And we're going to read down to verse 20. Would you stand please in reverence to God's holy word. We read. Like sheep they're laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling boy I love verse 15 read it with me but God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave for he shall receive me then we're told to ponder there and meditate Selah. verse 16 be not thou afraid amen when one is made rich when the glory of his house is increased for when he dieth he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. Now here's what's sad. They shall never see light. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. Lord, thank you for your blessed word we've just read. Now I ask that the sweet Holy Spirit will anoint me. Lord, that you will enable me to preach this message the way you've given it to me. 
And Lord, that you will just speak to each and every heart, especially that one, Lord, that may not know you as their personal Lord and Savior. We love you. We praise you. Be honored and glorified in this message in Jesus' name. And all the Lord's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The enigma for the psalmist was life itself and its puzzling relationship to the distribution of wealth and the power that wealth brings. How should we as believers respond when we see the rich getting richer? Should we be afraid that the wealthy will abuse the poor? Should we be impressed by the wealth that others possess and seek to imitate them? The writer here in Psalms gives us three reminders to help us keep our perspective in a world obsessed with wealth and the power it brings. Number one, wealth cannot prevent death. We see this in verses 5 through 12. I did not read those verses. And let me just be clear, it isn't a sin to be wealthy if we acknowledge God as the giver and we use what He gives to help others and glorify His name. But an increase in wealth often leads to an increase in evil. It's good to have things that money can buy if we don't lose the things that money can't buy. It's sad when people start to confuse prices with values. The French, the French atheist and scourge of Christianity, Voltaire, was a very rich man. He was the most famous person of the European Enlightenment in the sophisticated 18th century. And his writings, particularly his satirical attack on Christianity, Candid, were read everywhere. Yet, when Voltaire came to die, it's reported that he cried to his doctor in pained uh, desperation and said these words, I will give you half of all I possess if you will give me six more months of life. But of course, it was beyond his doctor's ability uh, to do that. And all Voltaire's great wealth could not slow down death's advance. He died despairing. Psalm 49 verse 10 says, and you can look at that right there, For he that he seeth that wise men die, likewise the poor and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Some folks think they are invincible and will never die. The point is that death is inevitable and that when it comes, we must leave everything behind. Two men met in a streetcar one day and they began to talk about a millionaire whose death had been announced in the morning's paper. One said, how much did he leave? He asked his friend. The other said everything he had. Yes, everything. Years ago, when burial customs was a bit different than what they are now, people used to make the same point when they said shrouds have no pockets. It's a recurring theme in much ancient literature, not only in the Bible, that to live without understanding is to live like an animal, since it is the ability to think and to reason that sets us human beings apart from the remainder of God's creation. Yet, how animal-like we are when we fail to consider the shortness of our days and prepare for how we will spend eternity. The words for abideth uh, not literally means does not pass the night. It suggests that in view of death, a person's position is life in life is not as secure even as a traveler who turns into an end for the evening. In our case, life is so short that we do not even make it to the morning. Yet, thank God, there will be a bright morning, the, we read, for the upright. And these are the ones that know the Lord. Yes, thank God, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. We're not home yet. We live in an old sin-cursed world. 
that's full of death, full of disappointments and sorrows. But thank God someday we're going to leave this world that we're living in and we're going to a better country. Hallelujah. And I believe we're going to be there sooner than later. All right. So we see number one. Wealth cannot prevent death. But number two. I want you to notice with me another reminder. Wealth will not determine our destiny. We see this in verses 13 through 15. When Jesus told his disciples that it was hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven, they were astonished because you see most Jews believe that the possession of wealth was a mark of God's blessing. If wealthy people have a hard time getting into the kingdom, what hope is there for the rest of us? But remember, Jesus said the things that are impossible with man are possible with God. We just better make sure that we know Jesus Christ, that He's our Lord, that He's our Master, that He's our Savior. And yes, the same Lord that gave it to us can take it away from us. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We should not trust in one place the scripture says in uncertain riches. Yes, the people with wealth many times tend to trust themselves and their money. And to believe that the nice things that people say about them. The writer pictured wealthy lost people as dumb sheep led to the slaughterhouse by death, the shepherd, who would devour them. But we see in verses 13 to 15 that we have a great contrast between those who trust riches and those who trust God. Verse 13 adds a new and very important element. Those who are rich, they have followers. Look back at that verse. I want you to see this with me. Verse number uh, 13. Notice, hey, we better be careful how we're living because somebody might be following our example. We better make sure we're living for the Lord and that our lives is pointing, are pointing people to heaven and to trust Jesus. Notice he says here in verse 13, this their way is their folly, yet their posterity approve their uh, sayings. They, they uh, say, hey, I, I want that for myself. And so they follow the same folly uh, that their loved ones have before them or their neighbors or their friends. How sad, how tragic to die and go to a devil's hell and have your family follow your example and wake up some day in hell right with you. That's horrific even to think. We ought to be wanting to lead people to heaven, lead people to Jesus. I wonder what kind of message is your life and my life sending out to others. All right. So we see uh, rich have followers. It's a way of saying that not all who are foolish are rich. There are also foolish people who follow them, aspire to be like them, and approve their sayings or their philosophy of life. You do not have to have wealth to perish because of wealth. You can perish equally well merely by making money your goal and forgetting spiritual things. Beloved, that's what's got us in trouble in America. We're forgetting spiritual things. We need to remember uh, the commandments of God. We need to remember the promises of God. We need to remember that God is sovereign. That God is all-powerful. That God is omnipresent. That God is a holy God. And God will never change how He looks at sin. He hates sin as much today as He did yesterday and as He did a week ago and as He did a month ago, as He did a century ago. But thank God I'm glad God still loves old sinners and I'm glad Jesus still saves old sinners. Amen. My friend, let's not put our trust in material things. They're going to go up and smoke someday. We need to put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's people said, you see, that's part of the contrast. Not merely the goals of those who are materialistic and those who are upright, but also their ends. The person who's preoccupied with money has security, health, long life, and a lasting reputation as his goals. 
But the true end of such a person is death. And not only physical death, but spiritual death. And that's an eternal death. Oh, but let's get on the positive note. The most remarkable thing about this section, indeed of this psalm as a whole, is the statement of verse number 15, which expresses faith in life for the righteous after death. Oh my, it would be awful, it would be terrible if you and I had no hope of heaven after we die. Yes, heaven is a hope, but for everyone that has preceded us to heaven that was washed in the blood of Jesus, heaven's not a hope right now. Heaven is a living reality because they are right there with the Lord. And oh, how we miss them. But what impresses me about these words? These two words change everything. Thank God, I'm glad that there's life after death. Amen. All death can do to a Christian is transport us to heaven. Uh, to be in the very presence of our God. Hallelujah. Don't let the things of this world and all the events that are happening that are going against the Bible, going against God. Listen, friend, God's going to take care of all that someday. We just need to make sure we're taking care of the business that the Lord has called us to do. Amen. My goodness, we got to look back at that verse 15. Hey, amen. He talked about how their beauty will consume in the grave from their dwelling. Talk about the people don't know the Lord. But verse 15. But God. Look at that. Everybody say those two words with me. But God. Hey, that changes everything. But God. Amen. We redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For he shall receive me. Someone said these words, but God, are one of the great but God contrast of the Bible. They teach that those who trust riches will die, be buried, and yes, soon be forgotten. But those who trust God will be redeemed by Him and be taken to Him to enjoy personal life and fellowship in heaven forever with the Lord. My beloved friends, it might be dark, and I know we've talked about how dreary that things have been the last few days, but praise God, real soon the sun's going to shine again. And let me encourage you tonight, amen, morning is coming. Eternity is on its way. And before you know it, we'll be stepping right into eternity and be with our Lord. There'll never be no more tempter to tempt us. Hallelujah. There'll never be any more devil, no more sin. Thank God. Don't you want to go there right now? I'm looking. As Brother Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Amen. And I'm alive in Him. Yes, mornings are coming. Just as resurrection morning came for our Lord Jesus Christ, it's coming to us. We anticipate this morning when we'll be raised to glory and receive spiritual rewards from our Lord. So we see wealth cannot prevent death. That's our first reminder. And then second, wealth will not determine, thank God, our destiny. But then thirdly, wealth must not increase our desires. Don't be impressed and overawed when you see others getting wealthy and buying bigger houses and cars. All their wealth will be left behind when they die and ultimately lose its value. They won't be able to praise themselves, nor will they be able to hear others praise them. We take nothing with us when we die. If we've been faithful stewards of what God has given us, we possess eternal riches that will never fade away. We can't take wealth with us, someone said, but we can send it ahead. Amen? We can send it ahead. I want to ask you a very personal question, a penetrating question. Are you trusting Jesus as your Redeemer or are you trusting your wealth? Now is the time to get your priorities straight. For you will be in no frame of mind to do it when you're dying. There was a preacher that was called to speak to an old dying miser who wanted him to pray for his soul. But he was unwilling to take his hand as he did so. 
They talked about the afterlife. And when the preacher asked him pointedly what he was actually trusting at that uh, moment, the miser confessed that even as he seemed to be breathing his life's breath under the bedclothes, his hands were clutching the keys to his storage cabinet of treasures. He feared that his money would be taken from him when he died. It was why he would not take the preacher's hand. My friend, don't be so foolish. Relax your grip on perishing treasures and place your hand in the hand of Jesus who died to save you from your sins. Let's stand to our feet. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Brother Jason, would you come to the piano, please? My goodness. Think about it right now. There's people in hell. Not just because they were sinners and they were bad people. But because they failed to put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. They died without trusting the Lord. Boy, I'm glad I'm saved tonight. How about you? I'm glad I'm saved. But there's people that live many years on this earth and have opportunity after opportunity and yet they turn Jesus away time after time after time friends you don't want to do that we don't want you to die and go to hell have you ever stopped to think that your life is influencing other lives if you're going to influence other lives, don't you want to influence them toward heaven and not hell? God help us. I know there's a lot of things we don't like that's going on in our country. But there's something ought to bother us much more than what's happening right here in this temporal world. And it is that souls are perishing. Every moment that we live, every time we take a breath, somebody's dying. And they're facing eternity. But if that individual knows Jesus, they're protected. <laughs> they're going to go to heaven and be with him. But for those that don't know him, if they die in that state, they will, like the rich man, lift up their eyes in hell someday. Oh God, help us. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I wonder tonight, as the Lord spoke into your heart, Maybe God's put somebody on your heart that you know. Maybe a family member. Maybe a neighbor. Maybe somebody you work with. All they live for is what they can get here in this life. And they're not preparing for eternity. How sad. How bad. Would you raise your hand and say, Boy, I, I know some preacher that they're not prepared. They're not ready to meet the Lord. And I don't want them to die and go to hell. Would you pray for me that I can be a better witness to them? God bless you. And yes, yes. Oh, my. Oh, many hands going up. Many hands going up. God help us. God help us. Would there be somebody here tonight would slip your hand up and say, I need to rededicate my life to the Lord. There's some things I'm holding on to, and the Lord's telling me to let go of them and release them. You know what I found, friend, in my life? Anytime God has ever asked me to release something and give it over to Him or lay it down, you know what? I felt a whole lot better after I did. But what I found out is that that God was telling me to lay down, I never needed it to begin with. But He always, listen, God will never take something from you without giving you something back. Amen? Hey, He'll give you peace where you didn't have it. He'll give you joy where you had sadness. Amen. He'll give you meaning where you didn't have any meaning. What a Lord we serve. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, to apply it to our lives. We love you. We praise you. Lord, many raise their hands and they ask us to pray for them. 
Lord, they want to be a better witness to those that's around them. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to value those things that you value. Lord, to use whatever you've blessed us with, just not for our own selves, but God to assist and to help others and to further your kingdom to bring the lost to you to be saved. Now, Father, have your way in this invitation. Meet the needs of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to come right now and use this altar, we won't give you a moment to do that. Will you come right now? Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Amen. Anyone would like to come and pray? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Jesus said, it sums it up really, what shall it profit a man? He shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? That's how valuable, my friends, your soul and my soul is to the Lord. There's not enough money, there's not enough jewels or precious gold or silver that's worth more than our soul. Your soul is so valuable to Jesus that he gave his life for it. That you wouldn't have to perish and die and go to devil's hell. Friend, if you're watching on this live stream service and you don't know the Lord, I'd be glad to lead you to Christ. You say, what do I need to do to be saved? Well, number one, you've got to realize you're a sinner. Number two, you've got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that He's the only begotten Son of God. He died for your sins on the cross of Calvary and shed, your blood, shed His blood for you. He died, He was buried, but something happened on that third glorious day. He arose from the dead. If you'll repent of your sins, place your faith in Jesus, call upon Him to save you and forgive you of your sins, you've got to believe, amen, that God raised Jesus from the dead, amen. If you'll do that, hey, He'll save you. If you'd like to call me, my, my, I believe my cell number's on there. We'll be glad to talk to you about the Lord. Uh, my number's 423-571-4029. We do not want you to die and go to hell because Jesus went through it for you so you wouldn't have to go there. When he died on the cross. And God's people said, Lord help us. Lord help us. Brother Barry, would you dismiss us in prayer?